Seven rappers with rich parents. Hey viewers, welcome back to Flex Offenders. Most of today's rappers were born rich. They never sold drugs, they actually buy them. The closest they've witnessed a police chase is on the news or watching cops. These seven rappers have rich parents and they never knew what it was like to grind in the streets. They only hear about a myriad of hardships the 80s and 90s rappers went through. Don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button below. Also, comment rich parents and we'll give one lucky winner a shout out in the next video. 7. Richard Hillfinger, Ricky Hill You probably wear Tommy Hillfinger branded clothing. Born and raised in Greenwich, Connecticut, Richard Hillfinger is the son of fashion mogul Tommy Hillfinger, who's worth $400 million. Richard, aka Ricky Hill, may be the heir to his father's fashion empire, but had a different aspiration to become a rapper. I wanna do things to her mouth But she swear that ain't what she bout Ricky grew up surrounded by famous rappers who had an interest in his father's clothing line and he started rapping as a teenager. His body is covered with tattoos and looks like he needs several days of sleep after a weekend of partying and using all manner of drugs. In an interview with The Observer in 2011, shortly after landing a record deal with Warner Brothers, Ricky revealed that he lived in his father's apartment in New York and that he was banned from all music studios in the city, except one. He also bragged about being the best rapper from Connecticut. According to The Observer, Rick Hill has recorded over 18 mixtapes that he gave away for free. His rap lyrics are about girls, love, loss, being high, and just like most rappers, preaches water and drinks the same water. Album, you know, so that's hard. There's a lot of emotional pain in this album, like a lot of emotional distress. There's a lot of personal issues that I'm He's been to rehab and out and dated Rita Ora for a year right after she broke up with Calvin Harris. He has been arrested for punching a club bouncer who avoided to knock him down and complicate the situation more. But sorry, there was no cop chase. Love or hate him, he practically doesn't need your money. 6. O'Shea Jackson Jr. AKA Oh My Goodness. You most likely watched the movie Straight Outta Compton, the biographical drama about the famous niggas with attitudes, NWA gangster rap group, and you already know O'Shea Jackson Jr who played his father, Ice Cube, O'Shea Jackson Sr. Ice Cube, the California rapper come actor, rose to stardom as part of the group NWA, alongside Dr. Dre, Easy e MC Ren, DJ Yellow, and Arabian Prince. Cube left the group only to diss them back with his famous track Baseline after members led by Easy e made derogatory remarks on his solo success. O'Shea Jr.'s role introduced him to the world even though he had dipped his toe into rap music under the name OMG way before his on-screen appearance. Even though Ice Cube rapped about the hardships and ruthless condition in Compton, O'Shea Jr. never experienced any of them in real life but on set. After all, his father was already rich before he was born, still selling records and he is also an actor with a net worth of about $160 million. According to the Irish Times, O'Shea Jr. aka OMG recorded a few tracks with his brother, Daryl, and featured in his father's album, I Am The West. He later recorded a mixtape titled, Jackin' For Beats. O'Shea Jr. has his own rap style, which is a little more upbeat, but still sounds a bit like his father. Niggas is mad at me. Heard that I'm getting paid. Guess a young brother can't count currency nowadays. Do they really need a G to start riding around with the K? However, he ditched rapping to pursue acting and screenwriting at the USC School of Cinematic Arts, where he graduated. Since then, he has appeared on the debut of WWE SmackDown in the movies like 2019 Godzilla King of the Monsters, where he plays Chief Warrant Officer Jackson Barnes. Five. Romeo Miller, aka Romeo. Forget about Romeo and Juliet, the book, the movie, or the rap song by Silk E. There's the real Romeo, the son of hip hop legend Percy Master P. Miller. Percy Romeo Miller Jr. started rapping at a tender age of five under the stage name of Lil Romeo. 
that was likely their mode of communication. Dad raps, I need a burger, I'm hungry. Bring me one, son, and make me say, uh. And the Romeo raps, I ate all the burgers. Maybe you open a burger joint, and you can say, uh. By the way, Master P opened a new restaurant, Big Papa Burgers, in August 2019. Lil Romeo released a platinum single and a gold record, and the young rapper became an instant sensation with his hits like Two Way and My Baby. He was also 12 when his song My Baby peaked at number one on the Billboard charts. He appeared on MTV Cribs, showing off his fantastic house, cars, and lavish lifestyle. But practically, it wasn't his wealth that he was flaunting. But rap skills aren't the only thing Romeo inherited from his role model and father. He's business-oriented, makes appearances on movies, manages a clothing line, and he has appeared on ads. Master P's net worth is around $200 million thanks to his strategy and investments. Romeo hasn't been as successful as he was with his first two albums, but he still realizes new music, and what matters is his dad is rich. His father gifted him with a custom Mercedes when he was merely 12 years old. Miller Jr. eventually left the scene to attend the USC on a basketball scholarship. After he was dropped from the junior season in 2010 by the USC Trojans, his former university basketball team, he became an actor. He has also released a couple of mixtapes. One thing is for sure, Romeo knows how to keep it real. 4. Gabriel Kane Day Lewis, aka Gabe. Gabe Day is the son of Daniel Day Lewis, a multiple Oscar winning actor. Apparently, Gabe hates it when people compare him to his father. In 2013, he released a video for his Green Aura song. It was a song glorifying marijuana and expressing his frustrations. I mean, what else comes to mind when green and hip hop mix? In the song, Gabe claims that he smokes weed for self medication to help him cope with people comparing him to his father. One line went, Call me Gabe Day and not Gabe Day Lewis, because if you're trying to call me out, I'm about to Gabe Day lose it. When I'm sad are the ones when I smoke first, self-medicated because my heart and my throat hurt. Trying to understand what it means to be a man, appreciated by his friends and all of those who aren't his fans. Call me Gabe Day and not Gabe Day Lewis, because if you're trying to call me out, I'm about to Gabe Day lose it, bitch. And that was the final nail in the coffin that buried all his rap aspirations. The London Evening Standard magazine describes him as a musician and a tortured soul. Growing up was pretty rough for him due to his father's status. Studying in fancy schools, affluent lifestyles, and transitioning from Europe to the States are the reasons why Gabe Day decided to rap and talk about his frustrations and hardships. In the song, he also raps from Europe to the East Coast. It was easy to adapt. I was on a bad path. I did too many drugs. Felt like coping on my own when all I needed was a hug. He also mentioned that Nas and J. Cole were his inspirations. Now he's more of a singer and songwriter, drawing inspiration from John Legend and Sam Smith. So why did his rap career come to a halt? Well, you all know Daniel Day Lewis is fresh eye, and Gabe Day's song wasn't good at all for dad's ears, considering how much he loves his son and gives him whatever he needs. The song is no longer online, and Gabe is now focusing on light modeling and self-reflective music career, which is not bad, considering there is no rap fan who would want to hear a ranting Daniel Day Lewis again. Not now, not forever. 3. Jermaine Dupre Dare not step on Jermaine Dupre's J's, or J's, the Jordan shoes. They are very expensive, and only kids with wealthy parents can afford them. Kids like Jermaine Dupre. Jermaine owns So So Deaf Records, and many may think that he had a humble upbringing, like the artists that he has collaborated with. But that's not the case. Dupre's father is Michael Malden, who was once the president of Columbia Records and may be worth $2 million. Business acumen runs in the family. When he was just 12 years old, he joined the group Houdini as a dancer. Afterwards, he decided to try his luck in rapping and producing music. He also wrote a book, Young, Rich, and Dangerous, The Making of a Music Mogul, where he considered himself a self-made millionaire. He wrote, and I quote, My achievements didn't come easy, no matter how it might look to people looking in from the outside. He was referring to the fact that even though he has rich parents, he worked hard to achieve what he has. He has made a mark of his own in the world of hip-hop by producing tracks for artists such as TLC, 
Jay-Z, Alicia Keys, Usher, and Janet Jackson. The creation of Criss Cross was the genesis of Jermaine Dupre's success. However, the rapper admits in his book that his father nurtured him and even allowed him to perform at the New York Fresh Fest when he was 12. The experience propelled Dupre into the world of hip hop. Regardless, he still falls on the list of rappers who were born with silver spoons in their mouths. Two, Alan Daniel Maman, AKA The Alchemist. Before hitting the scenes as a rapper and a producer for some famous artists, The Alchemist was just another rich kid living his best life in Beverly Hills. It's no surprise that the rapper, whose real name is Alan Daniel Maman, attended the same high school with celebs such as Angelina Jolie. The Alchemist lived comfortably as the son of a dentist, just like you would do if your parents were super rich. When he decided to proceed with rap, he left Beverly Hills and started spending time with friends who were serious about hip hop. One of his friends was James Kane's son, Scott Kane, who also hailed from a wealthy family. Both The Alchemist and Kane formed a group and called it The Hooligans. They signed with Tommy Boy, but their first album never left the studio. Their first single, Put Your Hands Up, didn't get much airplay, and Tommy Boy decided to drop the group and shelve the album. Scott went on to become an actor, and The Alchemist went on with what he knew best, becoming one of the most respected producers in the industry. I grew up, you know, in West LA, you know, in an area where there's a lot of movie stars, and rich kids and shit like that, you know what I mean? It, it's a lot different than where we're at right now. Um, you know, you got your hoods over there too, but um, that's where I grew up at, you know, and, and I made my way over here. Created beats for the likes of Nas, Mob Deep, Action Bronson, etc. He's currently working alongside Eminem as a DJ and signed to Shady Records as a producer. 1. Migos You all know Migos. It consists of Offset, Quavo, and Takeoff. They grew up together in a lovely suburb in Gwinnett County, Georgia. They lived with Offset's mother, who is college educated and rich enough to live in the suburbs. According to some sources, Offset's mother was a member of the famous Black Greek fraternity organizations. That speaks volumes. In an interview, Quavo said, I ain't gonna sit here like my neighbor was hard and I had to get out there and grind. We made it hard for ourselves. We chose to stay on the streets. The world loves their mumble rap style. Well, except for Snoop Dogg and his fellow rapper and actor from Queens, New York, 50 Cent. Despite making waves in the industry since 2015, the three rappers are not new to controversy. They've ruffled a few feathers with other artists and been involved in deadly gunfights and legal battles. Migo's story is, however, different from other rich kids come rappers. You came up in the same house, mama house in the basement. Oh, no, a little bit family and stick together. After clicking together and calling themselves Migos, the then upcoming rappers terrorized their neighbors and got into trouble to shape their image. Bravo told Rolling Stone that they had to find money by any means necessary, including burglary. They used their illicit proceeds to fund their music and buy their flashy jewelry and clothing. You thought Jermaine Dupre was self-made? Migos are self-self-made. 